If you've seen any of our other videos that talk about hazardous locations in class two rated areas, you may be wondering, how do I know if I have a class two area in my facility? Well, I'm Jordan with Sonic Air, and on this You Ask, We Answer, we'll take a look at some of the factors to help you determine if you have a classified area in your facility. Before we get rolling, if you find this information helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You can also follow us on LinkedIn for more helpful information about everything dust related. So when considering if an area classification is appropriate for your facility, the first question you should probably ask your team is, are we certain our dust is combustible? If you're not sure, there are several testing laboratories available that can do a very simple and inexpensive test called a go-no-go -go test that will quickly determine if you are handling a combustible dust. If the dust is not combustible, then you do not have a class two environment. However, if the dust is combustible, then there are some additional steps you can take to determine if certain areas of your facility should be rated as class two environments. The guiding document for making any determinations around this topic is NFPA 499, the recommended practice for the classification of combustible dusts and hazardous locations for electrical installations. This is a starting point with a tremendous amount of guidance on what areas should and should not be classified due to your specific operations and dust handling or management practices. But says who? Who makes the final judgment on area classification? While this is often done by what's considered an authority having jurisdiction, or an AHJ, and the AHJ is often a local building inspector or fire marshal, and either of these individuals would have the authority to classify areas within your facility as class two. And another entity that might have an impact on how you classify certain areas within your facility may actually come from within your own health and safety or electrical teams. And they may set requirements and standard practices for your business that go above and beyond the minimum level of compliance required by an AHJ. But once you have determined that there are particular areas of handling or generating dust within your facility that should be considered class two rated, then you must determine if they should be division one or division two. Division one means that a combustible dust hazard exists regularly, whereas division two should be used for the areas where the hazard exists infrequently, such as if a machine malfunction or there's a clean out process that has to occur periodically. You know, it's often common to have division two areas that surround the more acute division one areas. And while this may be technically possible, many locations will treat all areas with the same regard. For instance, if they deem an area to be class two division one, then they will treat all of the adjacent areas within the room also as division one, no matter the radius from the dust generating activity but just know that area classification will have an impact on the equipment you need to purchase for your facility. Class two, division two rated areas will need equipment that is rated for either division one or two, and areas that are rated for division one will only be allowed to use division one rated equipment. I hope this video has given you a starting point for determining if your facility should be classified, but if you'd like some assistance, our dust safety professionals would be glad to help. Just visit our website or email us at moreinfo at sonicair.com. We love to hear from you, the good, the bad, and yes, even the ugly. So if you have any ideas for one of our videos, please let us know by leaving some feedback on our YouTube channel, in the comments below, or on our LinkedIn page. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on You Ask, We Answer.